let this be a normal field trip? With a friend? No way! Oh. Cruising on that main street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Yeah. Next thing that you know, you see it. <laughs> Come on in and don't be shy. Just to make your day complete, you might get baked into a pie. Oh, the magic scuba. Step inside, it's a wild ride. Come on, right on the magic scuba. Hey, did you know that skin is made up of millions of cells? Oh my god, what are you doing for me? Yeah, lots of epithelial cells make up the different layers of skin. They're actually squamous epithelial. I'm glad you guys already know about the skin. We're taking a field trip to someone's skin today. Wait, I thought we were taking a t- Oh, holy poof, I just cut myself. <laughs> Perfect, right on cue. Let's have a look. Before we get started, you guys should understand why the skin is so important. We cannot live without it. Five major functions make the skin so important. The first is protection, because the skin covers and protects underlying tissues and organs. Skin also maintains a normal body temperature by regulating heat. It synthesizes and stores certain nutrients as well. But how does the skin synthesize nutrients? Oh, we'll talk about that later, but it has to do with sunlight. Skin is also responsible for sensory reception of stimuli and excretion and secretion of substances. We'll talk about how the skin accomplishes all these once inside. Let's head on in. Kids, look over there! To your left, you can see a huge mole. Attractive, right? On the other side, you can see lots of shiny sweat just coming from that indent. That large pillar coming out of it, one of the many strands of hair coming out of your skin, originates from the hair root and the hair follicle that covers it. The erector pili muscle connected to the follicle allows the hair to stand up. That indent I pointed to earlier is called a pore, and it's where sweat glands secrete sweat. There are also sebaceous glands in the pores that secrete sebum, which lubricates the skin and hair. Did I also mention there was sweat? Ew, that's so gross. Well, it's necessary for the body. Otherwise, we would overheat. We wouldn't want that, would we? Not to mention, it helps us maintain homeostasis. Home homer homeo what? Homeostasis. The skin can also secrete things like oils and salts to help keep things in and out. Our fluid and electrolyte balance depends partially on our skin. Guys, seriously, guys, guys, what's going on? Don't worry, Matt. We're just exploring your wonderful skin cells. Ouch! It burns. Did someone say burn? What? Burns are classified by first degree, second degree, and third degree. They are very dangerous because if they go too deep, they can be life-threatening by damaging the nerves. First degree burns damage epidermis layer and papillary dermis. Second degree burns severely damage the epidermis and the dermis. Third degree burns kill the epidermal and dermal cells and may even be damaging to epidermis and organs. I will talk more about these layers later. Well, I think I have a fourth degree burn. It hurts so much. Oh hush, don't scream so degree. much. That's just your touch receptors freaking out. It only hurts because your first layer of defense, the skin, has been penetrated. The bacteria are trying to enter your body. Anyway, students, we're almost past the first main layer, which, I, like I mentioned earlier, is called the epidermis. It acts like a wall, the first defense maneuver of the immune system, preventing foreign bodies like us from entering the body. Of course, that's a different story since that skin is cut. It's getting darker. Well, we are going deeper into the skin, after all. Right now, we're in the deepest layer of the epidermis, the stratum basal, also known as the stratum germativum, the main site of skin cell production. The other layers are mostly dead compared to here. The stratum spinosum and stratum granulosum, the stratum corneum, they, are all, they all contain dead cells or dying skin cells. The closer to the surface they are, the more keratin they have. This helps make our skin waterproof. Speaking of dark, those things over there are melanocytes. They produce melanin, a brown, yellow brown, or black pigment that determines the color of your skin depending on its concentration. And, and those over there, those are keratinocytes, responsible for strengthening your skin, hair, and nails with the keratin they produce. They starve in the basal layer, and they rise up to become squamous cells in higher layers. Brace yourselves, guys. We're now entering the dermis. 
Oh wow, what are those weird structures outside? Oh, those? Those are the fibers holding the layer to the others. Look, you can see the capillaries and nerve endings as well. The dermis is made up of two layers, the papillary layer and the reticular layer. The papillary layer has many blood vessels, while the reticular layer is made up of dense collagen fiber bundles. Guys, really, what are we doing? It really hurts. I'm serious. No worries, Matt. We're almost done. Here, look, we're now in the subcutaneous layer. You mean the hypodermis, the one full of fat? Yup, this layer helps us insulate ourselves and keep us warm when it's cold out. Now class, I think it's time to leave. Matt's getting a little impatient. Observe, as he brings his hand close to the cut. Uh, Miss Frizzle? I don't think this is very safe. Nonsense. Now class, that is a nail. It's also made of dead cells. See? These densely packed cells help seal the fingertips so nothing gets in. Though Matt certainly wants us out. Hang on!